Hi, you're watching Analog Output. I'm Rich Holmes, and I've got a new project. Um, so the ribbon controller interface I made recently. So the first electronics I've done in several years, and I'm now in the mood to do some more. And uh, I thought an obvious thing to do would be to make some Eurorack modules to expand my Mother 32 synthesizer. Now, I've, I've tried to phrase that carefully. This is not about building a Eurorack system uh, you know, with a Mother 32 off in the corner. It's about building a small rack, at least initially, uh, with a few modules to extend the Mother 32's capabilities. And it could evolve into something much bigger eventually, of course, but that's not the way I'm thinking about it for now. Um, I don't have a long-term plan because I don't really know how my interests and enthusiasms are going to evolve. And I'm not going to know what I want until I've done some hands-on exploration. So, I'm planning for the short term instead. So, for instance, the rack itself. Um, if you're designing a system, you need to know things like uh, how big to make it. You need to know if you want to have a, uh, you know, a flat, shallow skiff or an upright cabinet, uh, something portable, something massive. Decisions like that. But at least for the long term, I don't know these things. I don't know what it, things I'm going to want like that. So in designing for the short term, it makes sense to me to put something together that's enough to get me started without putting lots of money or time or effort into something I might not decide is actually what I want in the, in the long run. So something small and in, inexpensive. Um, and inexpensive to me means don't buy it, build it. Uh, in particular, um, I thought about building using uh, surplus or reclaimed materials wherever possible to keep the cost down. So I decided I wanted to build a 3U84HP rack. All right, now your rack modules, if you don't know, they're 3U in height, where U is one and three quarters inches. So 3U is five and a quarter inches. Uh, and their widths are given in HP, where HP is a unit is uh, a fifth of an inch. Don't ask me where these quarter inch, you know, one and one fifth inch and one and three quarter inches. Don't ask me where they come from. They're just industry standards. Uh, and that's all I know. So three U means one row of modules and 84 HP is 16.8 inches. All right. Now, the mother 32 itself is 60 HP. And uh, I would need another four HP for a power supply module. So if I were to mount the mother 32 on the rack, it would leave 20 HP for the modules which is room enough for like two or three or maybe four modules. Uh, at one point, I thought I'd start off with one module and then save up and add another module in a few months, add a couple more later in the year, and maybe it'd be a year or so from now before I'd want to get beyond 20 HP. And if, if you're building a Eurorack system from scratch, it doesn't make sense to say, okay, well, I'll start with one module and then another module. And see. I mean, you need you can't do anything with one module. Right. You have to start with like half a dozen at least, at the very minimum where you can do anything at all. Um, but I'm not starting from a zero. I'm starting from the mother 32. And it, I think it makes perfect sense to add one module and add another module later. Um, but then after I bought my first module, um, I unexpectedly got a check for a gift and couldn't resist spending it on a second module. And then I realized after that that probably what I should get next after that would be um, some relatively inexpensive utility modules, um, which means I could afford to get them fairly soon, which means that doing it this way, I'd be likely to be hurting for space in just a few months rather than a year. Uh, unless I leave the Mother 32 in its case and then devote the whole rack to modules. Um, now, horizontal surfaces are at a premium on, in my house, so I decided, okay, what I will do is build something that will let me put the modules above the Mother 32. Okay, Mother 32 here, modules there. That's what I designed. All right. Now, <clears throat> for this, I had to buy a pair of rails. And this is where it gets messy. Okay. If you go shopping for Eurorack mails, rails, mails, rails, if you go shopping for Eurorack rails, at least from American vendors, 
you find mainly two options. You've got tip-top rails and you've got Synthrotech rails. Okay, they're, they're different, um, but either one's usable. The tip-top rails, they're, they're both, you know, they're both aluminum extrusions, but they got different profiles. The tip-top rails, uh, they come with threaded inserts, which is, you know, a strip um, with 84 holes drilled and tapped, 30, 3 millimeters diameter, which you use for screwing in the mounting screws for the modules. Uh, and the Synthrotech rails come with slide nuts, so you, you, they're square nuts. You just slide into the channel, 3 millimeter uh, uh, threaded holes again. Um, either one is usable. Either one, you know, people use both. Um, the tip-top rails sell for $40 a pair. Synthrotech rails, 84 HP, sell for about $18 a pair, which seems kind of like a no-brainer, except, unfortunately, it's not. Okay. If you do some Googling or information about Synthrotech, uh, eventually you'll find this discussion on Reddit or other sites that talk about the same situation. Seems back in October 2017 on the Synthrotech Facebook page, they decided it would be a good idea to post a picture of Harvey Weinstein with a caption saying, buy more synths. Okay, now does that make any sense to you? I mean, what does Harvey Weinstein have to do with buying synths? I don't get it. A lot of other people don't get it either. But you don't have to get the point of it to understand using a picture of a serial rapist to promote your business is a pretty boneheaded and offensive thing to do. All right, a number of people, obviously, a number of people complained, and what did Synthrotech do? Did they say, gosh, you're right, that was a dumb move on our part, we apologize, we've taken the post down, and we'll try to do better in the future? No. They said, and this is a quote, to all your loyal customers, I love you. Free box of tissues and a sticker to the deeply offended. This is a really good way to find people to ban from this page, and it's working. Okay, they did not apologize. They doubled down, and they insulted anybody who complained. And within a couple of days, Modular Addict announced that they were not going to carry Synthrotech products anymore. As I understand it, they dropped Synthrotech from their site immediately and ate the cost of their inventory. Uh, SynthCube also dropped Synthrotech, although apparently they did try to sell the remaining inventory. Uh, for the past year, they've had one Synthrotech module listed at a 50% off. Uh, I guess nobody wants it. This all is public record. Okay, On the Reddit page, you can read more accusations and allegations, none of which I have confirmation of. But there are a lot of them. At, you know, uh, Allegations of sexism, homophobia, right-wing extremism, questionable, uh, questionable business practices on the part of the owner of Synthrotech. And even if only half of that's true, it's still an ugly picture. And if you, even if you discount all of it, all, all of the accusations, the behavior on Facebook, the public record on Facebook, to me, that's just disqualifying. I mean, I have no desire to give any money to Synthrotech after that. But the tip-top rails cost more than twice as much. So is there a third alternative? And I figured there probably must be. I mean, after all, these rails are not exclusively or originally a Eurorack thing. Um, in my day job, I'm a nuclear physicist. And we make lots of use of data acquisition systems that consist of electronic modules screwed into racks next to one another, connected with patch cores. Does this sound familiar? Okay. And aside from nuclear physicists and Eurorack musicians, there are lots of other people they make use of instrumentation systems with similar setups. And so there are several companies. Um, Vector is one. Schroff is another. Uh, G-Tech is another. They actually made the rails that, uh, that Depfer used when they invented Eurodrack uh, in the first place. Uh, they have product lines for these applications, including 84 HP rails that take slide nuts or threaded inserts. And there's a website that talks about using some of these options for Euroracks. And, People use them all. Um, and places like Mouser and DigiKey and, and sites like that uh, sell these things in you know, single unit quantities. And you can go and buy them and, and use them to build your Euro rack. So I found one vendor that was selling what looked to me like they were probably 
suitable trough rails for about nine dollars each um nine dollars and change um now that's without nuts or inserts so for two of them you'd be looking at a cost of 18 or 19 dollars and then you'd have to add the nuts or the threaded inserts uh so you're looking at a higher cost than the synthrotech uh rails but probably less than the cost of the tip top rails except there's some compromises okay these rails, uh, they won't take three millimeter slide nuts, so you have to use two and a half millimeter, and you can do that. It's just a little inconvenient because three millimeter screws are what are usually supplied when you buy a module. So you need to chuck those out and replace them. You have to get yourself a, a, a box of two and a half millimeter screws to replace uh, the three millimeter screws with. So in addition to the cost of the rails and the nuts, you have the cost of the screws. Or you can get three millimeter threaded inserts, which will work. Schroff makes them. Except that the site that I found that charges $9 for the rails doesn't carry the threaded inserts. And there's another site that does carry the threaded inserts, but for the same rails, they charge about $12. Okay. And then there's another gotcha, which is that the slots in the Schroff rails are set further back so that the screws you get with your modules, they may be the right diameter, but they may not be long enough. So you may end up, you probably end up having to buy a box of screws again, in any case. So what do you do? Do you buy inserts from one source, and one source and rails from another source, and screws from maybe a third source with three separate shipping charges, or you pay more for the rails, uh, but get them shipped with the inserts, or do you forget about the inserts and buy the slide nuts and the screws? Or, I mean, I spent hours <laughs> kind of chasing down all these alternatives and trying to figure out what would work. I finally said, you know what? <sighs> Once you take into account the costs of rails and inserts or nuts and screws and shipping charges, there's just not that big a difference compared to just ordering tip-top rails from a Eurorack vendor. You're probably ordering other stuff from anyway. And if you combine the rail order with, uh, with ordering a module in one order, you're probably spending enough money to qualify for free shipping. And you end up with a standard, commonly used rail system that's compatible with the screws that come with the modules, less hassle, to me, that's just worth the few dollars you might save if you try to shop for bargains. So I bought the tip top rails. Okay. Now, what about the rest of the case? Well, I was rather intrigued by a video from Molten Music Technology that one, um, in which he was showing how you can get into Eurorack at low cost. And he has, he has a large system with a commercial case, but he was making some videos for newcomers with limited budgets. And um, he showed how you could make a, a, I'll put this in quotes, case um, by taking two rails and, and screwing on two end pieces made out of, um, literally, corrugated cardboard. Okay, he took a cardboard box and cut a couple pieces out of it and attached the rails to them. And, and it worked at least well enough for what he wanted to do with it. Um, I kind of like that kind of thinking. Um, I didn't want to get that primitive, though, so I decided I was not going to use corrugated cardboard. I used corrugated plastic. So on election day, November of 2018, uh, Ann Magnarelli was elected um, to a city court judge in Syracuse. So what? Well, so on the day after Election Day, there were um, a whole lot of signs around. Not only Ann Magnarelli's, but a lot of others. And, of course, there's always signs for yard sales and run walks and all sorts of things. Um, and a lot of these signs are made out of this stuff called chloroplast. You look at it carefully, you can see... It's structured a little bit like corrugated cardboard. Uh, two surfaces and then a lot of sort of flutes down the middle. Um, the stuff is uh, lightweight. It's durable. And it is free for the taking on the day after Election Day and things like that. 
Um, so uh, it's a it's a good material to work with. One drawback it does have is it's so inert that um, it's kind of hard to get anything to stick to it, like adhesives if you want to glue it together. Um, here's a test that I did. Okay, for my not very scientific test here, here is a coral plast sign, and I cut off some small pieces and glued them on using three types of glue that I happen to have around. Hot glue, cyanoacrylate, also known as super glue, and epoxy. 30 minute epoxy, I believe, from Bob Smith Industries, Bob Smith Industries CA also, and unknown provenance for the hot glue. And I glued those down several days ago, and now I'm going to see how well any of them hold, if at all. So start with hot glue. I'll try twisting, and it's pretty secure. Try pulling, and it comes up. Very, very little residue here. Most of it's stuck on the sign. CA holds up under twisting. And it can be pulled up. Most of the resin is stuck down there. Epoxy. Also comes up. So it takes a fair bit of force to dislodge any of these, but under enough force, they'll just come up. Okay, another thing that I tried was um, this stuff here. Can you see what it says? This is this is Gorilla Tape. It's a Gorilla's brand of, uh, of black duct tape. Um, sticks pretty well to this stuff. Uh, in fact, I, I stuck a piece down and pulled it up, and um, what happened was that it's not that the tape pulled off the coroplast, it's that the the printing on the coroplast pulled off with the tape. Um, anyway, the Gorilla Tape works pretty well, too. So what I ended up using for this project, um, used epoxy because it worked better than the hot glue, and the um, I didn't have as much of the CA as I had epoxy, so I used the epoxy. And uh, and the, the um, Gorilla Tape to hold things together. All right, got cut and folded pieces. So this is a piece that folds here. It's got flaps here and here and here. And the distance, the outside distance from here to here matches up pretty nicely with the 84 HP rail. Likewise, this is also pretty well matched to that 84 HP rail. And then we've got one side piece and another side piece. So then these go together and the rails get mounted to them. At least that's the theory. I've glued all of this together. Well, most of this. I haven't put the, the top part on. This piece here that goes across there. I'll put that on later. But I've, uh, you know, took this big piece, bent it there and there, and glued the flaps to the end pieces there. You can see that on the inside I've got some long pieces of Gorilla Tape reinforcing those glue joints. And on the outside there's also some pieces of Gorilla Tape. They're relatively shorter pieces, and they're intended to be temporary. The ones on the inside are intended to be permanent. And um, I wanted to just to just bend 
this part up and this part up, it turned out that, uh, you know, you're bending it across the flutes here and it's kind of hard and uh, it wants to it wants to stay flat, which meant it was kind of bowing out here um, just a little bit and it wasn't that bad, but I decided I didn't like it. So I, I went in and, and uh, cut most of that edge there and then put down a strip of Gorilla Tape there. So this front's basically just held on with Gorilla Tape, at least at the bottom edge, but I think that'll be fine. And uh, as I said, I haven't put the top on yet, but what I want to do first is put the rails on. So I've got markings here where uh, I kind of just uh, use the rail itself to determine where that hole needs to be, a screw hole to mount the rail, and then drew a line and mark that point there four and 13 16 inches from there to there being the proper distance for the screws for these two rails. And uh, next thing is to go ahead and put that stuff together. <clears throat> I have a hole punch here. It's not a very good hole punch, but I can make it do the job. And I've got my hole positions marked. Just... Okay, I think that's going to be all right. All right, I think that's a hole. Got my screws, and I decided to get a washer and add that since it's a kind of soft surface here. Okay, so that'll go through there very nicely. Now I just need three more holes. All right, let's put some rails in. Okay, there's gonna be a little bit of a gap on that side, but I'm not too worried about that. Pretty close, and have a module panel here, and it looks like that should go in just fine. All right, bravo! Here it is. I glued it together, and I've also, you may notice put a hole back there that's going to be for the uh, power cord and the uh, output cable for the mother 32 and you may also notice I, I took the rails out and if you look more closely you'll see that I've actually added four new holes a little bit behind the old ones because uh, I decided I didn't like the position of the rails I wanted them a little further back so I, I did that, and now I'm going to have to put the rails back in. But before that, uh, I want to address one other problem with this thing, which is, I don't know if you noticed or not, but um, it looks like crap. I mean, it looks like somebody made this thing out of an old yard sign or something. 
So, but I think I've got a fix for that, which is black adhesive vinyl. Here we are, covered in black vinyl and black Gorilla Tape. And speaking of Gorilla Tape, you remember those temporary pieces on the outsides that I mentioned? Uh, well, I sort of forgot to remove them. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you can see here. They, they're there under the vinyl showing themselves. Okay. It is not beautiful, but is it a lot better than it was? Yeah, sure. There we go. All right, just need to put the rails in and we're set. Here we are, the case with the rails installed and I've installed the uh, power supply module and down in the bottom we have the Mother 32 with the ribbon cable interface off on the side. There it is. So, I've built a Euro rack. It's not going to win any beauty contests, but it's functional, does what I want it to do. Uh, and what did it cost me? $40 for the rails, and then some black vinyl, some Gorilla Tape, some screws, uh, some epoxy. Total cost of what I used there, probably about maybe $5. So this is, yeah, this is like a $45 um, 3U by 84 HP with space for a Mother 32 uh, Eurorack. And now all I need is modules to put in it, which I've got the kits. I just have to put them together. And uh, we'll get to that. So if you liked what you saw here, hit the like button, wherever it is over there, I guess. Uh, if you, um, you want to know about it when I start building those modules, hit the subscribe button. And I will see you next time on Analog Output.